I really enjoyed this. I actually like this as a reboot. Yeah, there were some elements, but maybe they could have kind of handled a little bit better. Maybe it didn't need to be as long. But I really felt like the writer was literally sitting there with the Bible, like next to his script as it were his computer as he's writing because there's Caesar, who's kind of a savior figure, but he's been dead for now, like close to 300 years. So there's been multiple generations that have gone on. They've kind of lost the message, which it's kind of been kind of changed in so many different ways of what the message was originally. And so when they finally find the real message, it all of a sudden there's a new kind of Messiah-like figure in this Noah character. I love the fact that he's named Noah. And there's even a flood scene. I won't give it away, but boy, there's even a flood scene in this whole thing that I find fascinating that they were able to give a kind of go on the nose in relationship to that but i really love this raka character he's the orangutan who's the winds uh, the wisdom kind of of the whole thing he was funny he, but also wise but he's also the one that's kind of holding true to the true story of caesar and so mm. i felt that this one kind of made that biblical jump for me i'm sitting there with my friend kind of elbowing and going are you seeing this are you seeing yeah. this and it's like it's just so many things now did it make it better I don't know. I think that it just kind of shows the fact that um, all there's no things new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun in this, in the sense that there is great storylines that are kind of taken from. Yet the CGI was incredible. I, I, I mean, there were a few scenes where you kind of go, oh yeah, I can pick it out that this is animated. But the yeah. majority of it, I, I'm like going, wow, these look like real creatures. I mean, these look like real apes, real primates, real gorillas mm. kind of going through. I don't know, what did you see? What were some things that you kind of picked out? Well, when you bring up the kind of biblical overlap, to me that is part of what gave this movie a point in terms of right. why have you made this? What is the story that you're trying to tell? The difficulty for me is that the, the previous Planet of the Apes movies are a while ago and they do they do a little bit of a sort of overview at the beginning again. But in terms of the fact that Caesar is meant to be the uh, sort of saviour figure and that it's meant to be his teachings that have become a little bit warped, I kind of found myself going, what was Caesar's mission again? Like what was right. his what was his big teaching that we're supposed to see that they've kind of forgotten? So I feel like that was a little bit unfortunate because... He, the backbone of who Caesar is is meant to frame what these characters are doing and you kind of work it out as you go because it seemed like, you know, the main kind of point is that in this instance they're representing unity through apes and humans but there's this big thing about we can work together and that there's meant to be this like purity of intention, this drive towards compassion, right. this drive toward mercy and all of that kind of stuff. And then I thought it was really sort of relevant in a modern context where you've got this, the sort of baddie character, Proximus Caesar, he has decided to set up a, a community of sorts where he's declaring himself as the new saviour figure, as the kind of mouthpiece of Caesar, and yet he's warped the teaching, he's warped it for his own benefit, he's warped it so that he can kind of have his own, you know, army of followers, I suppose. And I thought that's really interesting because if we're wanting to look at this through a Christian point of view, there are so many people, unfortunately, and groups that use the teachings of the Bible, that use the life of Jesus for their own gain, you know, to right. kind of elevate their own sense of power and relevance and all of this sort of stuff. And you do have to make sure you're asking yourself, is this the true intention of Jesus teaching? You know, are mm. we going are right. we going back to actually what Jesus was saying and wanting from what he taught. And I don't think his goal was individual power. Like I don't no. think Jesus' goal was for no. any of us to feel like we are elevated above anybody else and to try to, you know, use that for our own means. And so that felt really powerful. And I'm also with you as well on the, it's so obvious, you can't call a character Noah and have a flood and have... <laughs> you know, systems wiped out that seem to be getting a little bit out of control and not go, hey, this sort of relates to this, the Bible. This and there's going really to be familiar. <laughs> yeah, and look, there's going to be entire audiences that have no understanding exactly. or connection with the Christian narrative, biblical narratives in any way, shape or form. But I do think all of us, no matter what faith background we come from, can resonate with that idea mm. of power getting out of control something's got to be done about it. How do you reset society when it seems like power is being misused, misappropriated, and where people are being mistreated because of it? And that exactly. for me is why this movie was particularly relevant and particularly powerful 
and it explains why they decided to make it. Going in, I'll be, I was kind of skeptical. Cash grab, they're just kind of going, that I just want to get another film out of this whole thing. But once I kind of got into it, and once you kind of get past the fact that, well, this is just pretty much an, a film about the apes and their story, there is a human element, but it's primarily about the apes. Mm. I was in there because they really did a good job of really kind of bringing together these fascinating components that are familiar probably especially to those with the christian narrative but yet within that it still made for a really great story and i really liked a lot yeah. of a lot of the characters themselves i really thought that mm -hmm. they did a great job as a new director um west ball who's was from the maze runner franchise and i think that he just did a really good job of kind of taking nuances of the the original franchise then this recent trilogy and then also this really fascinating biblical connections, which I don't think he'd admit to, but it was really, it really made it a richer experience for me in the end. So and I don't know, oh, go ahead. And something else that I appreciated too, which was sort of subtle, was the, the way that because, you know, as humans, we can become desensitized to part of the wonder of what we get to experience in life. Just these things right. that are really sort of fundamental to human experience, getting to appreciate the earth, nature, the stars, all of these sorts of things. There were a few moments where like the apes were getting an insight into the human world that was different right. from the tribal world that they lived in. Mm. And there was one scene especially where Noah is looking through a telescope and he has mm. no... He doesn't, he's like, what is this contraption? What is it that I'm seeing? And it's like his eyes opened to the wonder of just the world around him and this thing that sort of seems so, like it connected to existence because it's like, this is you in a bigger sort of perspective. Like the way that as humans we can get so stuck in the immediate, the stuff right in front of us. And then you go, my goodness, we actually exist in this massive universe of beauty yeah. and, you know, infinite kind of things that we don't fully grasp. And I know this is, it, it can sound very out there or whatever, but it was like, there were those moments in this movie that just made me go, yeah, when you look at what it means to exist and the way that we can interpret the world around us through fresh eyes, it just makes you remember and maybe realize how special it is you know, to oh, be yeah. here, to see the world, to live, all of this sort of thing. And I think this movie, even though it's not its core focus, it kind of touches on that too, just what it means to be human, what it means to see, to understand, to speak, to hear, to have community, all of that sort of stuff seemed a little bit, uh, a little bit of what they were wanting to feature in this film. Jumping off of what you were saying about the whole telescope scene, I think they really were able to make that even more of a reality with how they finish things, that this whole previous franchise really kind of happened on the west coast of the united states at least that's the way it felt to me and so all of a sudden i felt like they just broadened it out to going no 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 there's a whole world we're dealing with and there's a lot more out there that we haven't really discovered or we've forgotten that it actually exists yep. and so that excited me so that was probably the only it's not a criticism it's actually it left me going it left me wanting i want i want to see what the next step is yeah even though i'm with you i'm not this isn't like one of my favorite ones i don't go out and put on ape masks and walk around going woohoo planet of the apes <laughs> i don't do that but i think that the last franchise really um was good and I, i'm looking forward to seeing what they do with this as they kind of move forward yeah well the fact that they've invested in bringing it back all these years later says to me that they're hoping that it could go a little bit further but so russ as we land on this then where would you put kingdom of the planet of the apes is this on the watch list are you leaving it what is your perspective oh i think for 2024 this is definitely on the watch list for me so i think that this definitely is one of those films that would be worthwhile um getting out to see i think that like laura has said it'd probably be worthwhile kind of getting in at least seeing one or two of the previous films to appreciate where this one's going but i think this one really does stand alone and it is worthwhile i think this would go on the watch list for me how about you it's going on the watch list i was surprised i did not have high expectations going in i thought why are you making this? What are we doing? Is it going to be any good? I had all right. these questions. I'll admit to it. Uh, I was a little bit skeptical. And then I was pleasantly surprised. I thought, okay, you've got some intention here. You're trying to talk about something that has modern relevance and ask bigger questions, you know, which, right. which does set it, I think, sets it apart from some of the other movies out right now. And particularly in all of the streaming options and all of this sort of stuff, I don't think there's a lot of movies that are giving us conversation and uh, perspectives on the subjects that uh, this film in the Planet of the Apes franchise did. So it was kind of refreshing in that respect for me too. So I would put this on the watch list for sure. 